Profiling a JVM in a Kubernetes cluster with a tool that does not support Kubernetes is tricky for two reasons. First, in Kubernetes, containers and pods are created and destroyed dynamically, which makes it difficult to determine which JVMs are currently running and how to access them for profiling. Second, JVMs running in Kubernetes are containerized, which means that they are isolated from the host operating system. This makes it even more difficult to profile the JVMs because they are not directly accessible from the host. In this screencast, I will show you how these two problems are solved simply by using JProfiler, which supports attaching to JVMs in Kubernetes clusters with zero extra configuration. What we have here is a demo application of a note-taking app written with Spring Boot that saves text notes to a MongoDB database and images to a MinIO cloud storage service. There are three deployments, one for each service, and a load balancer service that lets us access the app externally in a browser. I have deployed this application on Amazon EKS, but it does not matter what Kubernetes provider you use, because JProfiler only depends on the ability to invoke the kubectl common line executable. To start a Kubernetes profiling session, we could start JProfiler and go to the Quick Attach tab in the Start Center. Or we can use the Attach button of the IDE integration. That will give us source code navigation and set the profile packages based on the current project. JProfiler can search for JVMs in three different ways. On the local machine, on a remote machine via SSH, or on a Kubernetes cluster. The only thing you have to tell JProfiler is where the kubectl command line tool is located that you use to manage your cluster. If it's on your local machine, the default setting is fine. Otherwise, you can ask JProfiler to connect to a remote machine via SSH and invoke kubectl there. JProfiler now uses kubectl to list all pods in all namespaces. Here, the default namespace contains my EKS cluster with three pods for the three different deployments. The Knode pod contains the Knode web container with a Spring Boot application. Sometimes it may be necessary to supply arguments to kubectl for authentication purposes. This is possible at the top of the dialog and you can choose to save these arguments across profiling sessions. These could be token or password flags or a kubeconfig flag to select a config file for a particular cluster. Let's select the Knode web container and list the JVMs that are running in it. JProfiler now copies some files into the container. This includes an agent with a native library that is suitable for the detected architecture. JProfiler will automatically download this agent if required. If this is not the container we're looking for, we can choose another one at the top. Typically, containers only house a single running JVM. We continue to the profiling settings after selecting the JVM. Because we have started this session from the IDE, JProfiler knows about the project packages and sets the call tree filters accordingly. This is the package that is used by the note-taking app. Now we start the profiling session by confirming the dialog. Let's record some CPU data. And also the MongoDB probe, because that's where the app saves its notes to. The external interface is available from some hard-to-guess hostname that can be found by listing services with kubectl. Let's create a node with an image. Back in JProfiler, we can now see the CPU tree of this operation. MongoDB operations are shown in the dedicated probe view. In this case, it was an insert command. The hotspots view shows a list of all MongoDB operations with backtraces. As promised, we can show methods in the IDE with a show source action. Because the session is managed in the IDE, we detach it there and not in JProfiler. 
Let's show how to perform a Kubernetes attach when kubectl is located on a remote machine. Also, we'll use the standalone method and not the IDE integration. In the Start Center, we activate the Quick Attach tab. There, we see the same content as in the dialog that was shown from the IDE integration. Again, we select the Kubernetes option. And now the kubectl is on another computer radio button. With the Edit button, you then configure an SSH connection, either directly or through multiple hops. No SSH installation has to be present on the local machine because JProfiler comes with its own integrated SSH client. JProfiler first opens an SSH connection to the remote machine and then uses kubectl there to connect to the Kubernetes cluster. On this demo machine, I've deployed a simple Java image with Minikube. Because I've profiled this JVM before, it has a light green background. The profiling settings from the last profiling session will be used automatically, even if it was profiled by another instance of JProfiler. Profiling JVMs in a Kubernetes cluster requires a tool that is specifically designed to handle the dynamic and containerized nature of the environment. JProfiler's built-in support for Kubernetes allows you to connect to JVMs running in Kubernetes containers in a safe way without modifying the deployment.